Hey there, John here. Welcome back to PC Bytes. In today's episode of looking at BIOS, we are going to run through the AI tweaker section. Am I the only one that thinks of uh, tweak from South Park when <laughs> I say AI tweaker? In any event, we have a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Before I start rambling about the settings, a quick warning. Please remember to exercise caution when making any changes to your BIOS because you can cause damage to your components. And as I've previously said, I am no expert. Um, this whole idea for this channel came about with me just researching what all of these various entries mean. And I just thought it would be a good idea to share that information with others because I thought others would also be curious about that. And I didn't find a central repository for any of this information. So I decided to make one myself. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Uh, at the top of the AA Tweaker page, we see three entries in yellow. Uh, that show the current targets for CPU speed, RAM frequency, and F-clock frequency. Uh, let's get into the individual entries. The first entry on here is AI Overclock Tuner. Uh, the options are Auto, Manual, or DOCP. This one is set for DOCP. What does DOCP mean? Well, let's step back for a second. For those of you that are familiar with Intel-based systems, you have most likely seen the term XMP before. XMP stands for Extreme Memory Profile. Memory manufacturers create these profiles and store them within the memory so that motherboards can access that information, adjust the BIOS settings, which will allow the memory to run at the advertised speed. I believe XMP is a trademark term um, for Intel. And so for Ryzen-based systems, motherboard manufacturers are using a different terminology so they don't have to pay either a rights fee or a licensing fee or something else. For ASUS, DOCP means DRAM overclock profile. While it is a different term, it is the same thing as XMP. For those users that don't want to manually tinker with the BIOS, DOCP is a quick and convenient way to get the system memory running at a higher speed. And you can see below, I have the DOCP settings, and some of these settings will get into what they mean in the next video. And then below that, on the next one, we have the BCLK frequency. This is an easy one. This stands for base clock. It's usually 100. And then the ratio multiplier, uh, which you can see on the right-hand side, in this case 37, uh, is multiplied by that. And then that will give you what the base speed of the CPU is. Increasing the multiplier is a way of getting your processor to operate at a faster speed, hence the term overclocking. Next item on here is the SP clock, SB clock spread spectrum. See three options, auto, enabled, and disabled. This one's currently on auto. Um, I'd love the audience's feedback on this one. Uh, based on my research, I believe anything in the BIOS references either SB or NB stands for either Southbridge or Northbridge. Um, these are legacy terms from, from many, many years ago, representing different parts of the chipset in a PC. For this particular entry, enabling it is supposed to minimize EMI or electromagnetic interference. In order to do this, the frequency is varied slightly to minimize electromagnetic signals. However, since overclocking requires very exacting voltage and frequency, this entry should be disabled if you're overclocking which I believe is why this entry is in the location that it's in. Uh, if you're not worried about overclocking, uh, minimizing your EMI may help various components or minimize interference to prevent various components with your, within your system from having issues. Next up is the ASUS Performance Enhancement, uh, or APE. This is disabled. Um, it's uh, ASUS's, ASUS, ASUS's way to automatically set up overclocking for the system. I am quoting now from ASUS's website. All B550 motherboards feature ASUS Performance Enhancement, APE, that optimizes BIOS settings to achieve the best performance for each board. APE also raises the power limit of the third generation Ryzen CPUs, I would presume fifth generation as well, to get up to a 17.5% performance boost. In a future video, we'll be testing this feature to see if, in fact, it does provide any type of performance boost. But that's your ASUS Performance Enhancement. 
And hey, out to the audience. Is it Asus, Asus, Asus? I don't know. Uh, I always thought it was Asus. Uh, and then I've, I've heard lots of uh, people say Asus. So I started saying Asus because Asus sounds cooler than Asus. I don't know. Next up, you can see what the memory frequency is at if I have uh, uh, various options that I could set it. But again, by having my DOCP running, it's automatically setting me up at the 3600 megahertz. Next up is FCLK frequency. Well, if BCLK stood for base clock, uh, this must be some sort of clock as well. And the options here are auto or a various frequency amount going all the way up to 3000 megahertz. FCLK is the infinity fabric clock speed. The timing and bandwidth for all the connected components like the DRAM controller and the PCIe bus are based off of the infinity fabric speed or as AMD refers to it just as the infinity fabric. Next up is the CPU core ratio. This is the ratio or multiplier, as I showed you earlier, uh, that gets multiplied by the base clock to determine the CPU's frequency. The user can pick a setting here from anywhere from 28 to 63.75 in 0.25 increments. Each 0.25 increment, if you're multiplying that by the 100 uh, base clock, would represent 25 megahertz. We've already seen that 37 is the default here for the 5600X. If I increase this ratio, presumably my CPU would run faster. However, in order for the CPU to be stable, it may require additional power to run at that higher frequency. And that additional power means additional heat, which could create a thermal issue, which is the essential challenge for people that do overclocking. How do I get the highest speed and uh, minimize the heat so that uh, it doesn't affect the performance. But again, in here, I could put 28 if I wanted to slow down my processor. And I can go all the way up to 63.75. I put in a number higher than 63.75, it just defaults to 63.75. Next up is the CPU core ratio per CCX. I don't believe this has any impact on my particular system. Um, CCX stands for core complex, which is a AMD term. Uh, my 5600X has six cores, and as a result only has one CCX. Because in the current generation of Ryzen architecture, uh, a CCX or core complex has up to eight cores. Since this only has six cores, it has only one CCX. Uh, but if I had a 5900 or a 5950, um, I would have more than one CCX in here, and then I could adjust the clock ratio for different CCXs within the CPU. But again, since I only have the one CCX within the system. If I just change the CPU core ratio generally, that will affect the cores on my system. Next up is TPU. TPU stands for Turbo Progress Unit, which is another ASUS term, I believe ASUS term. It's similar to APE. This entry will automatically adjust settings for enhanced performance. Uh, the options here are keep your current settings or go to TPU1 or TPU2. Um, my understanding is TPU1 is for air-cooled systems while TPU2 is for water-cooled systems. And I think what happens is you can create some settings under each one of those headings uh, and then be able to switch between them depending on how you have your system set up. Next up is performance bias. I think this one is a bit of a cheat as it allows the BIOS to better run certain benchmarks. While this may help achieve better scores in overclocking contests, it could cause system instability that would be better managed by manually tweaking the BIOS to max the overclocking potential of your system. So here, I keep current settings. Oh, I'm sorry, in performance BIOS. 
We see there's none, CBR15 gentle, Ida, Geekbench, or CBR15 aggressive. And then the last item I want to go over today is Precision Boost Overdrive. Don't confuse this with Precision Boost or Precision Boost 2. Uh, those are slightly different things. PBO allows the BIOS to maximize three distinct power limits within the CPU system. The first one, PPT, which is the package power tracking. The second one is TDC, which is the thermal design current. And the third one is EDC, electrical design current. There's a YouTube channel called Gamers Nexus, which some of you may be familiar with. They did a detailed video on PBO about a year ago, and I'll link that uh, in the video description for those that might be interested in learning a little bit more about the PBO. We will be exploring this in a, in a future video to see if it helps. But anyway, if we were going to uh, use Precision Boost Overdrive, we go to this set of menus nested within the PBO entry. The first one here is the PBO FMAX Enhancer. Uh, this is a legacy option for Zen 2 chips. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive on whether I am going to have it auto, disabled, enabled, or manual. Right now it's set to auto. And then you have the Precision Boost Overdrive Scaler, which is auto or manual. Uh, the scaler allows voltages to be increased to all the cores. Uh, and then you got the Max CPU Boost Clock Override, which is currently set at auto. And I think uh, from my research, the maximum boost is 200 megahertz, but you can really input any number in here and nothing happens. So I don't know if you put in a number greater than 200, it defaults back or what happens. But like I said, we're gonna spend a little time on this one in a future video. hear that in the background my uh golden retriever jock just came into the room decided that he wants a little bit of attention so sorry about that uh and then the last thing on here is the platform thermal throttle limit uh if you put it to manual another option comes up where you can input a number which is supposed to be a temperature and that's my understanding um and that's the maximum temperature that you would be comfortable with the cpu reaching while pbo is active but again you know, I read that uh, maybe using a number like 80 or 90, you know, might be the, the max that you want to go. But I found that the maximum you could put in here is 255. If I put in a number higher than 255, it tells me that's an invalid input range. So uh, the valid numbers are 0 to 255 which may mean that uh, this represents something other than temperature. Uh, so I'd love to have uh, someone who knows a little bit more about this provide some feedback. Be happy to, to learn something new here. But again, we'll play with the PBO in a future video. So we're going to stop here today. In the next video, we're going to jump into all of the memory timings, which uh, there are a lot of them. And it took a lot of time for me to try to figure out what they all were. Uh, but uh, I hope you come back to watch that one, so stay tuned. I hope you're finding these videos helpful because I'm having a lot of fun making them. Throwing Tweak in there is my first crack at doing a B-roll. And as I continue to make these videos, I hope they continue to improve on the production values. Uh, in the meantime, however, I'm going to be adding more information to my website so that uh, it could be a good reference for all things BIOS. If you are finding these videos helpful, please consider liking and subscribing, and I hope to see you on the next one.